Hey guys, Otto here from Acquisition Partner. What I'm gonna to do today in this video, guys, is jump over into my phone here, which I'm gonna screen share for you in a moment. And what we're gonna do is actually roast some cold emails, okay? And the way that we're gonna do this is by going into Instantly's Cold Email Masterclass Facebook group. Um, I'm not a big Facebook guy, uh, but this group is pretty useful um, and it's a good way to see kind of updates that Instantly have got planned um, and as well as sort of questions from the uh, from the usership, the user base, general things that people are coming up against, problems and how they are solving it. So I've been interacting with a few posts on here answering people's questions for, uh, for just a bit of fun to pass some time. So what I'm going to do is actually go over into my phone and share the screen now so that you guys can see it um, whilst I go through this live. Now, in a generic sort of general sense, what I'm seeing in this group is um, uh, a lot of people who are meticulously focused on email metrics alone. And you might think that that is a, a very silly thing to say because obviously we are in a cold email uh, group here where people are sort of troubleshooting their issues relating solely to cold email. But at the end of the day, everybody in this group is trying to make money. So whether that's through an agency or they are a freelancer or a contractor, the reason that they are using instantly, the reason that they're in this group and asking these questions and trying to troubleshoot their issues is because they're trying to maximize their return from email as one of their singular um, client acquisition methodologies. And what we're seeing is that uh, a lot of people are getting very hung up on pissing people off potentially prospects wise, um, annoying people. What do I do if they respond negatively? What if they say unsubscribe? Um, what if they register me as a spam complaint? Um, I'm a local business. What should I do? Should it, is cold email? Does it even work? There's, there's a lot of um, kind of uh, Q&A here that's just screaming out to me analysis paralysis. And uh, a lot of the comments that I've been making lately has basically tried to just spur people into action to, to kind of put their own personal biases aside with cold email and actually just take action on launching them and learning as they go. Because that really is the key to, to understanding what's going to work best for your offer. Um, you can obviously be you know, somewhat scientific in how you A-B test your offers and your copies, subject lines, things like that. And you can do that all through instantly. Um, but a lot of what I'm seeing here, and I'm just going to jump into a couple of comments, for example, um, to, to run you through. A lot of what I'm saying is, is this real sort of um, par paralyzed focus on getting everything perfect and everything right, um, as opposed to actually just getting a leads list, cleaning it and uh, uh, launching those campaigns straight away. So this chap here, he's um, uh, started this post off here saying this may be a silly question. But when it comes to anything that's improving your business, there's no such thing, thing as a silly question. OK, um, if you have a business right now, you're going to know that you don't know all the answers, um, even if you think you might. And um, you're going to have to ask people that actually know more than you do about a specific problem you're trying to solve uh, in order for you to actually solve that and improve and make more money through your business. Okay, it's how you learn, it's how you improve. So this chap here, Tom, he, he's asked his question, to give you a brief synopsis, he's got a local uh, clothing and printing business where they do, um, I guess, sort of uh, graphic design printing, you know, business cards, things like that, but they also are a supplier of workwear and clothing. And what this chap is asking is, is basically whether cold email is going to be effective for reaching out to local businesses within a 10 mile radius. Um, and this guy's been very authentic and honest. You know, a lot of the responses he's got, he's come back to them saying, yep, yeah, you know, I think I'm overthinking it. Uh, it's been super helpful. But I just want to talk to you about some of the uh, some of the comments that he wrote um, and, and some of the replies I gave. OK, so this one's important. So. Somebody's answered a question here and he's come back to them saying, thanks. I understand this. It's just not knowing, um, uh, it's just knowing what to say to convince them to use a company that has cold emailed them. I may be overthinking this. Okay. And what I've said here is that, look, guy, you're not just a company that's cold emailed them. You're not cold, cold emailing them from India or Mozambique or France or Ireland, wherever it might be. Um, what I've tried to kind of show this guy is that his perception is off about his leverage as a business owner and where he stands in kind of the local business matrix um, and actually he needs to focus on putting messaging across that is uh, equivalent to the business owners that he's actually reaching out to because they might be um, you know dry cleaners or restaurants whatever it might be he's got a local business too graphic design printing uh, supplying clothing and, and workwear so what i've tried to say to this guy is is you need to step outside of the the sort of schema uh, and the frame of cold email and you need to focus on actually bringing in other channels into your outreach okay so if you are trying to rely on cold email predominantly to reach out to businesses within a small local vicinity five to ten miles you know you know we have to reply on one 
uh, a methodology of outreach that's all remote and internet based. But if you have a business like this, send them an email, but follow up with a knock on the door, go and sit down with them, have a cup, have a cup of tea with them and do what you can to increase those touch points with, with the prospect. And this is something that this guy can do um, that gives him a massive amount of leverage over um, his multinational or national chains that he will be uh, competing with. And this is what I've tried to get out from him here. You know, one thing that we do with all of our program members is we say to them, um, instead of focusing on the buzzword of an offer, what is the goal outcome? of contacting that prospect, that prospective client. What is the goal outcome? And then you start to see their, the, the cogs in their brain move and they start to think, well, I want, I, I want to have a call with them. We work with them. We say that that's not your goal outcome of, of contacting them. Of course, if that was your goal outcome, we just want to, we'd run businesses that just had calls with people. Okay. So you have to get really down to the basis and refine uh, exactly what it is behind um, the motivation to, for, for you to reach out to these companies. Okay, and get really specific with what that might be. And this is what I was trying to do with this guy here, Tom. I was trying to say to him, what, what actually is your out, ideal outcome? Don't talk about open rates or I just want them to know who we are. Like in your head, you will know why you are reaching out to a business. Is it because you want them to become a customer for five to 10 years and you want to earn 200K from them every single year or, and you want to supply them 30 new items of clothing a year, whatever it might be, you have to get uh, incredibly granular with, with what your desired outcome is because at a subconscious level, whether you're reaching out to these prospective clients through cold email or cold calls, or you're actually sitting in front of them in a physical demo, or you're uh, conducting a sales call with them, if you're not clear on what the next steps are, and if you're not clear on what the goal outcome is for you and, and is for the relationship between you both, it's going to be incredibly difficult for you to convince them to, to proceed with you. Okay, it's almost like overwhelming them with... Um, you know, a load of options and saying, well, you know, figure it out. We're, we're sort of local and maybe you could kind of work with us. Maybe not. I don't know. Okay. Bye. You, you've got to take control. You've got to, you've got to try and um, leverage whatever you can to influence the, the pr prospective client into engaging with you. Okay. So this is what I've tried to do with this guy. I tried to say to him, like, look, what, what is your offer? What is the out ideal outcome? And he's, he's gotten closer there. So he said the ideal outcome uh, is for the local business who would receive these em emails. They then have a call with me. Uh, we then talk about whether they uh, need workwear or printing or not. And then best case, they're placed in order. Okay, to me, that doesn't sound like a best case scenario. To me, that sounds like I'm trying to rationalize um, the conversation and, and preempt how this relationship might go. You know, these guys, uh, they might be in a position where they've just had a terrible experience with a supplier or a printer. Um, they burnt all the clothing. They felt, they feel incredibly emotive about the whole thing. And they're desperately trying to just find a local business who they can place a massive 200 K order with right now today for workwear that they needed to receive yesterday. We don't know what position the prospect is in. We're obviously doing enough desktop research to add them into our leads list, but we don't know what position they're in. So you don't want to use that as a, a, a kind of personal bias that, um, that's going to preempt how you engage with that client. And that's exactly what I've tried to say to him here. So I've tried to say to him, um, and, and like I say, guys, go into the cold email masterclass and just take a look at these comments because I haven't looked at this guy's business, but I've just come back to him with uh, specific scripts here, subject lines, bodies, uh, and what he can actually do to pique their interest and their engagement. Um, uh, and then, you know, get them in, into a sit down. He's come back. Thank you. That's something that I had in mind. I think that would work. I'm trying to hit the area in multiple ways. Da -da -da -da. Omni channel makes sense. Okay. So the second thing I want to talk about, and I don't want to make this video too long, uh, going to notifications here, is about uh, is about responding to negative comments and how you respond to those. So I want to try and find it here. Uh, is it this one? Can't remember. So somebody's asked, somebody's asked, um, what do I do when somebody comes back and responds negatively? And unbelievably shocking to me, the majority of the comments have been stop. Uh, don't don't reply to them. You'll piss them off. You'll annoy them. If they say they're not interested, interested, it means they're not interested. And I've had to comment on the video saying how terrible that advice is because my experience of running a business for the last six years without having any social media content, without producing any online content or selling any online courses or anything like that is that if I was to give up at every single um, response that was neutral or negative or disinterested, then I would have missed out on hundreds of thousands of 
pounds of, of revenue each year for my business. Um, we've got a, I've got a post on my Twitter uh, feed of a, a guy that came back to me from the first cold email, literally insulting me, um, insulting my intelligence, saying I got things wrong about the brand name, I was spelling things wrong, X, Y, Z. If I had just ignored him, um, it would have been that. I would have had a hit to my ego potentially and, and it was nothing more than a negative reply. But I persisted with this individual. I sent him loon videos. Um, I agreed with the prospect, you know, num- one of the foundational rules of, of sales. I um, helped sort of meet objections before he, he pitched them to me. I gave him more information. Um, I answered loads of questions. I ended up turning this individual lead into 36,000 pounds in cash collected. So I'm not sure what that is in dollars. Is it $50,000? I'm not quite sure. Um, but over a small period of time it turned into around $50,000. And that was from me literally um, persisting with him. Okay, so people are coming back in here and they're saying, you know, you don't want to reply because you don't want to piss them off. My response to that has been, if you, if you are afraid of pissing people off, then you don't deserve to have a business. And if you're afraid of pissing people off, then you obviously don't believe in your product or your service that you're pushing, pushing forward. Uh, and at a foundational level, if you believe in what you're doing, if you would die for, for uh, the business and, and uh, your purpose and your mission, um, then you bloody well need to follow up with these individual prospects. Okay, so if you hear people saying, uh, you're going to piss them off, you know, don't reply to them. They might come back and say naughty words to you, whatever it might be. Ignore that advice and go back to them. Reply. Say, if they've come back saying not interested, go back to them, say, totally get it. I knew you wouldn't, uh, you know, I knew you wouldn't be interested. It's exactly why I sent you an email directly and why you didn't email me first. Um, you know, just try any, any angle that you can with your specific offer. And I promise you that, um, you know, a large percentage of the times, I'd almost say, you know, 75% of the time when we get a neutral or a negative response, we're able to actually convert that lead uh, into a paying client. Okay, so like I say, guys, jump, jump over into this, uh, into this group. Um, what I'd say too is take, take the responses with a pinch of salt, okay? Um, you know, if you're seeing replies from people that you don't agree with, challenge them on it and see how they come back. Like this guy here, um, you know, he came back to me I said to him, you know, it's terrible advice. Why would you do that? If you feel like you're pissing somebody off, then you obviously um, don't believe in your service, okay? He comes back, well, maybe if you do piss them off, they'll mark you as spam and keep going and your future emails, deliverability will be damaged and all of that stuff. And and just from me commenting that to him, he's come back with a a, a totally non-conclusive response that I've been able to end in one second by saying that's exactly why we hedge risk by having multiple domains and usernames. Okay, so... Like I say, take take these posts and comments with a pinch of salt and actually challenge people on it. See see whether they actually know what they're talking about. Because my fear is with a lot of these groups is that the large majority of these people don't actually have experience of um, of running a business. You know, uh, they haven't run a business offline for for six plus years. Um, they they don't make any sort of considerable income from their business, and they're actually just blasting cold emails because. You know, they're sat in their mum's basement, they're a student and they think they're going to try and start a business and they'll actually give up. All right. So sometimes those are the guys that are the most vocal. But that being said, guys, I'll put an end to this video because because um, I've gone on a bit. I'm going to stop mirroring. And uh, like I say, jump jump over into that group. Look, we've got our own uh, acquisition partner Facebook group as well. We've got a Discord community where it's a lot easier for me to answer um, your questions too. So wherever you might find me, we've got a free course. We don't do any paid courses, 31 plus free modules. that's going to help you bag your first 100K per year client in five days. Sounds insane, but it all totally makes sense within the five days to 100K free course. So hopefully that helps, guys. Hopefully that gave you a bit of a chuckle. And um, yeah, drop a comment below if you got value from this. All right, we'll catch up in the next one. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.